sitting around a $12 billion market cap. SoFi isn't vibing like it used to. Aside from the economic changes that affect the market as a whole, there may be another culprit behind the fall of SoFi over the past month. Stay tuned and watch until the very end to find out. Welcome to Wealth Gambit. On this channel, we cover all things stocks from stock news to fundamental analysis. Although we do like to see everyone make a lot of money, we're not financial advisors, so always do your own due diligence. By the way, we recently made our social media pages, so be sure to follow us there for more stock news, market updates, and most of all, some dank financial memes. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, for the million dollar question, why is SoFi stock still crashing? The answer to this question is not as easy and not as clear, but there are some strong culprits. First off, and we discuss this in almost every video, but it needs to be said that there are general ebbs and flows of the market. You can think of the market like a tide. Sometimes it's with you, in which case it lifts all boats tremendously, or sometimes it's against you, in some cases leaving your boat sitting directly on the sea floor. Now let's take a look at the general market, specifically the S&P 500. As you can see, over the last three months, it has gone up over 10%, which for the S&P 500 is pretty good. The market seems to be doing well, so why isn't SoFi? Well, let's zoom into a specific sector now. The sector we will be zooming into is the fintech sector, aka financial technology. As you can see, in the last three months, a firm has taken a hit as well, but what about the more well-established fintech? They appear to be faring even worse. As you can see, PayPal has taken about a 28% hit over the last three months. Last but not least, we have a direct rival to SoFi, Upstart, who was apparently not spared in this bloodbath. Now to SoFi's chart. Now comparing SoFi to other fintechs, it actually appears to be doing the best relative to its fellow fintech companies. So considering that the overall market seems to be doing well, we can't necessarily say it's the markets as a whole. Also, lightly looking through finance stocks in general, they don't seem to be dipping like the fintechs. So this may just be sector rotation. Now I wish it would end there, but there's definitely more to it. Now for everybody's least favorite word, your absolute favorite short interest, which exists when traders borrow shares, then immediately sell them into the open market, hoping to buy them back at a later date for a cheaper price. They would then return the shares and profit off the difference. Now, for the case of SoFi, short interest appears to be increasing. Since SoFi's last report, short interest has risen to about 56.55 million shares, up by about 24% from its 45.77 million shares sold short last November 30th. Last month, SoFi ended with about 8.35% of the float being shorted. But just this past week, it seems the shorts may be trying to take advantage of the sector rotation or are taking advantage of the delay of student loan refinancing and its negative effects on SoFi's business. At the time of writing this, 9.98% of about 566 million public float is shorted and it will take about 1.59 days to cover their short positions on average. For reference, here is some short interest data on some of SoFi's top competitors. Lending Club has 3.93% of its float shorted, while Upstart has about 5.6% of the float being shorted. Now, I know it may seem like all hope is lost. Maybe some of you are scared. If you're a true Sophian soldier, you're probably actually happy, but just take this into account. If you had to guess within the last two years when the best time to buy Tesla was, what would you guess? If your answer was during the dip, then you're absolutely 100% right. Ladies and gents, we normally don't post our positions in full, but during 2020, when the pandemic was taking off, people were panicking, fear was at its peak. We felt that Tesla was dropping well below where we felt its intrinsic value was, and needless to say, we bought the f out of the dip. Now, it might not seem like that much, but considering this was pre-split, meaning one share of Tesla back then is equivalent to five shares of Tesla now, it definitely added up to a pretty penny. Also, full disclosure, this is not all the Tesla we bought or sold, but what we're getting at is good things take time. It took almost two years for any of these positions to get to where they are today, and two years from now, in our non-financial advisor opinion, SoFi stock will seem like an absolute steal, but you probably already knew that. So ladies and gents, it has now become a war of attrition against the shorts. Will we panic and sell, adding to the selling pressure, and ultimately put money into the pockets of the shorts? Or will we hold the line and not give them a single cent? already know we'll be here in the trenches and if you will be too comment shorts aren't ready in the comments below to automatically get shouted out in the next video that wraps it up for today's video guys if you found any value in this video please smash that like button for the youtube algorithm helps the channel out a lot anyways until next time peace